Hey guys, Kerexiv here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the Pokemon Z-Ring and Z-Crystal Special Set from Pokemon Sun and Moon. The Z-Ring is the device used in the Pokemon Sun and Moon games and anime by the characters in order to use Z-Moves. And this set is one of the Japanese releases of the Z-Ring that not only includes the basic contents of the Z-Ring, but also some bonuses to help get started on the Z-Crystal collection. So this set includes several things. The Z-Ring itself, six Z crystals, and the collection board. So, let's get started. To start, we'll look at the Pokemon Z-Ring all by itself. So, the Z-Ring is cast entirely in this pearly white plastic, and it's almost entirely consistent of just the plastic color. This has very little paint, with the only paint being here in the front, where you can see some pearly white paint, as well as some black in here and down here. You'll see on the front the, uh, the move symbol, which is this arrow up top, then this Z in the middle. You also got the connectors for the Z crystals, the activation button down here. On the side, you have six slots to store Z crystals on. You have the on off switch right here, which can be switched between three different modes. The middle, which is sleep mode, over here, which is mode 1, and over here, which is mode 2, as indicated by the number of lines. Got the speaker down here, the battery pack down here, and on the other side is a sensor that will come into play later, although for some people, this isn't really going to be used at all. Now put on, just open up on this side, place it in your wrist, and close it back down. Now compared to the uh, Poyon Mega Ring, it's certainly got a bigger size and is a little bit looser, so for my wrist it slides up and down when just attached by itself, and so for me I find it useful to use the wrist strap. As that helps it stay in place more. And all by itself, when it's in sleep mode, pressing the button on the bomb will activate the basic sound for it, as well as flash through all the different colors. It also does vibrate. And that's basically all it does on its own. Next, we have the six Pokemon Z Crystals. Now, since this is the Japanese release, I'm going to be using the Japanese naming scheme to refer to these, which is essentially just using the type name and then Z after it. So, the, C the six Z crystals here are Grass Z, Water Z, Fire Z, Normal Z, Electric Z, and Fighting Z. Each one has the same shape, which are basically these uh, small diamond-shaped crystals that are raised on the top and flat on the bottom. On the bottom, you can see a clip for attaching it, as well as the three holes that the connectors will go into. On the top, we've got the basic shape, as well as a raised triangle here, and an indent right here, which will help with attaching them. And on the inside, it does have an LED, and symbol will appear when used with the Z-Ring, though on their own, They don't really do anything. And the last piece of the set is the collection board. And this is exactly what it sounds like. A board to store your collection of Pokemon Z crystals. Now as you can see, there is a split down the middle as this comes in two pieces out of the packaging. And they just attach together like so. This is a pretty simple brown plastic, but it is meant to look like a stone slab. And it does get across that pretty well. This has a slot for each of the of the 18 different Type-Z crystals. And each one has that Type-Z crystal symbol next to it. Now, while you can see all the stickers applied here, out of the box it only has the six stickers for the six Z crystals included, pre-applied. So, for the rest, you have to apply them yourself. And it does include a sticker sheet. And for those of you who can't read Japanese, the basic way it goes is that 
it just has them lined up by row. So for the top one, you do put the three here in order, and then just continue on for the next three rows. Now place in one of the Z crystals. You want to take it, take this indented part, place it under this notch here, then press it into place. We can do the same for the other five. And then to remove AM, you just reach in your finger and pull it out. Simple as that. Next, I'll show off the roleplay functionality that the Z ring has with the Z crystals. Now, for this, we're going to primarily be using mode 1. And uh, when you switch between the two modes, it does have a good indicator of what happens. Though it is pretty similar. When you switch to mode 1, it'll make a startup sound and flash yellow. And when you switch it to mode 2, it'll make that same sound and flash blue instead. Another thing of note is that this does have vibration inside. So when you switch it to mode 1, it vibrates once, and when you switch it to mode 2, it vibrates twice. So, in mode 1, pressing the button by itself will make the same sequence of lights and sounds as when it's in sleep mode. So, to change that, we need to add a Z crystal. So, to attach the Z crystal, you're going to take this indent part here and clip it onto this hook by pressing in on the arrow, then press down on the other side. The light will change to match the color of the Z crystal and it'll illuminate the symbol inside. So, now when you press the uh, button again, It'll make that same charging sound, but it'll add in a sound for that type, as well as illuminate the symbol on the inside of the crystal. So that was for Grass Z. And we have Water Z. Then the Fire Z. Then Normal Z. Then electric Z. And finally fighting Z. And, of course, you can also store them on the sides of the Z-ring. So you just latch it on, like so. You can do this with all six of them. and they stay pretty securely on. You can shake them around all you want, and while they do rattle, they won't fall off, so they only come off when you pull them off yourself. 
making it a nice way to take a few with you on the go. Next, I'll show off the functionality between the Pokemon Z-Ring and the Pokemon Sun and Moon games on 3DS. Now this works regardless of what version of the game you have and what version of the Z-Ring you have as these are the same two products whether you get the uh, English version or the Japanese one. So, for this, you know, see I've got it set up in a battle. So for this, you're going to want to have your Z-Ring on and set to mode 1. You're going to also want to have the volume on your 3DS turned up. So, hit fight, then hit Z power, and you'll automatically see that it reacted there. So, first off, we'll activate the grass type Z move, Bloom Doom. And there we go. Now the way that works is that right here the Z-Ring actually has a microphone. And what it does is it listens for specific audio cues, specifically certain high-pitched cues that are played first when you hit the Z-Power button, then at the beginning of the Z-Move pose, and then at the start of the Z-Move itself. And this is programmed with lights and vibration patterns that go along with the Z-Moves themselves. And so I'll show this off for the other five as well. Next we'll use the water type Z move. Which is Hydro Vortex. Next we have the fire type Z move. Inferno Overdrive. Next we have the normal type Z move. Breakneck Blitz. Next we have the electric type Z move. Gigavolt Havoc. And last but not least, we have the fighting type Z move. 
all out pummeling. As a last little note in regards to the 3DS compatibility, the Z-Ring doesn't technically need a Z-Crystal attached to react to the sounds and activate the Z-Moves. And, you can actually attach any Z-Crystal and use any Z-Move, but it's only when the proper corresponding Z-Crystal is attached will the Z-Crystal react when using a Z-Move. And as you can see there, it also works with Pokemon specific Z moves like Pikachu's Catastro Pika. Now, whether or not this means that there are going to be releases for these specific Pokemon exclusive Z crystals is up in the air, but at the very least, it can still react to all of the different Z moves, regardless of whether or not you have the specific Z crystal for it. And finally, I'm just going to go over mode 2 real quickly. As the way this is described, it kind of differs from region to region. The original intent, or at least how it is in Japan, is that mode 2 is for use with the arcade game Pokemon Gaole. Whereas for kind of the Western territories, it's more advertised as a roleplay mode. In this mode, it does not have the mic on. Or rather, the mic does not function while in this mode. And instead, this is for using with the Pokemon Go Lay arcade game. And the way that works is via the sensor on the bottom. This is what will transmit a signal from the Z-Ring to the game. And the way it works is that as you use it alongside your 3DS, it actually builds up energy inside. You can check the energy by having it on and double pressing the button. So as indicated there, it has energy built up. So to activate that and connect to the game, you press and hold down the button. As you can see, it'll start flashing yellow, meaning that it's communicating with the Gaole game. Then while you're at it, you can use this to actually activate a Z-move. And so basically you can use that built up energy with the arcade game, or at least if you live in Japan you can, and you can do that to activate Z-moves in the game. But when you're all out of energy, you'll do that, and that, to indicate that you have none anymore. And there we go! Overall, I think the Pokemon Z-Ring is quite a good improvement over the previous Mega Ring and Mega Bangle, and it definitely works well as a successor to those two. It has some pretty basic roleplay functionality with the Z-Crystals, and that's just because uh, the sounds and lights that it makes when using the Z-Crystal is to represent the Z-Move poses and charging up the Z-Power. When it really gets into using the Z-Moves, that's where the 3DS comes in. And technically, you don't actually have to have the games or even a 3DS to actually activate those. Because they're all sound activated, you could actually just watch a video of people demonstrating Z-Moves and then use it with your C-Ring and it could hear and pick up those sounds and activate with them. And as you could see from those sounds, they really were programmed to go along with the Z-Moves themselves to the point where the lights matched up as well as the vibrations. 
So if you're winning on your wrist, you can really feel the power of the Z-move. And that's kind of the idea they, they're going for, because in Japan, this is basically marketed as a 4D experience. Where if you're wearing that, you're not only seeing and hearing the Z-moves being used on screen, but you're also feeling them through your wrist and the Z-ring. And so with this set, this is also cool because it gives you not only the Z-ring, but the collecting board and 6 Z crystals. Now, the way they're distributed is different between different regions, because the basic sets do differ. In Japan, the Z ring by itself just comes with the electric Z, Z crystal, whereas for North America, it comes with the grass, water, and fire Z crystals. Though interestingly, in Japan, this is the only way to get these five Z crystals, these five other Z crystals so far as the only other ones are three packs. So, whichever way you go, you're getting the same product. This is just a nice little thing to get if you want to get this collection board to store your Z crystals. Though otherwise you can still take them on the go with you using the slots on the side of the Z ring. Whichever way you go, you are getting the same product. And it does work out pretty well. This is certainly a fun, a fun toy, a cool accessory to the Pokemon Sun Moon games, and something that I look forward to continuing with and collecting other Z-Crystals for. So, next time, I'll be reviewing the Pro Mighty Action X Gushant. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and or subscribe. You can check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash 50 And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.